imagine ever exchanging any of my shares for gold coins. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I would rather trust in the intrinsic value of a bunch of really fine businesses run by good managers selling products that people like to buy and have liked to buy for a long time and them exchanging their future uh, efforts, the, the money that comes from their wages for C's candy or Coca-Cola or whatever, then take some piece of metal that people dig out of the ground in South Africa and then put back in the ground at Fort Knox, you know, after transporting it and insuring it and everything. I, I've never been able to get it real excited about gold. Now, my dad was a huge enthusiast for a gold standard. So, I mean, I grew up in a family where gold was revered, if not possessed. And I would, I, it, it, uh, I, I gave it its full chance, but I just, have, I've never understood what the intrinsic value of, of, of gold is. And, and uh, um, you know, we'll sell you some at Borsheim's, but I would never exchange the idea of exchanging a producing asset for a non-producing asset uh, would be pretty, pretty foreign to me. Uh, and I would say this in terms of the of predictions, and I, I know the spirit in which you asked the question. But in ter there's just there's a market out there all the time, uh, and, and people love to hear predictions. I mean, if, if I said I was going to offer a bunch of predictions today, I mean, we we would have a million people here. I mean, they, they, they're dying to have predictions and speeches at Rotary Clubs or trade associations or whatever. That's, they, they, they just plain love it. And that's what a whole industry is built upon. You know, the, the people coming out of Washington that, that talk about political predictions and the, I don't read those in the paper at all because it, it's, it's just, it's, it's space fillers, uh, basically. And uh, uh, you've you mentioned Edgar Casey, Ben Graham, uh, knew Edgar Casey pretty well. but. I, I just have never seen any utility to any of that at all. There will be some huge surprises in the world. Uh, there's no question about that. But I don't, I don't think that betting on any specific one is, is a very smart policy. In fact, our, we usually bet against them in terms of super catastrophes. We know there will be a 7.0 or greater quake in California in the next 50 years. We don't know where it'll be or when it'll be or anything like that. We're willing to pay out a lot of money if it happens tomorrow. And because people do worry about catastrophes, and, and this case is perfectly proper with, with, with insured values, but it, it just isn't any way, in, in our view, to get through economic life. Charlie? Well, I suppose the one time when a single mother might want to own gold compared to anything else is if she faced conditions like a Jew in Vienna in 1939 or, I mean, there are conditions you can imagine where some form of transportable wealth would be uh, useful compared to, to anything else. But absent those extreme conditions, uh, I think it's for the birds. Now, silver. <laughs> It's hard to think of anything other than fleeing the country. And, yeah, which, right. and, it, um, right. and Charlie and I don't give a lot of thought to fleeing the country. Although, I must say that the one thing I really find reprehensible is the people that make a lot of money in this country and then, and then, and then leave to, you know, to uh, get in other tax jurisdictions or something like this. I really, uh, I don't, I, uh, but I'm a little crazy. I don't mind paying taxes. <laughs> Let's go to.